After being sent into the North Atlantic to explore the sunken RMS Titanic on Sunday, a submersible tour boat vanished without a trace. Twitter jokes about the absurdity of the scenario reached royal funeral proportions as rescuers looked for the five missing people, and new information about the trip's planning hinted that it wasn't such a good idea after all. It was likely safe to assume that all the people on board had perished by Thursday. Being a typical person who isn't into visiting the sites of naval disasters, you must have some inquiries. How about we try to wade through this together? But before starting, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And now, let's get started. Officials confirmed Thursday that a catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber killed all five personnel aboard the tourist submarine that vanished over the weekend while investigating the Titanic shipwreck. The U.S. Coast Guard made the news after a large search in the North Atlantic had uncovered a debris area on the ocean's bottom, which was verified to be components of the missing sub. Rear Admiral John Mauger of the Coast Guard said during a briefing, deepest condolences to the families, and added that the debris field is consistent with a catastrophic implosion of the vessel. Ocean Gate Expeditions, the organization behind the trip, confirmed to reporters that all guests, including Ocean Gate Expedition CEO Stockton Rush, have sadly been lost. What happened? Ocean Gate Expedition's Titan submersible sank during a dive to the Titanic debris site on Sunday morning, and the research ship Polar Prince lost touch with the sub approximately an hour and 45 minutes afterward, according to the Coast Guard. On Sunday evening, the Coast Guard issued the initial warning about the missing submarine by stating that a 21-foot submarine with a white hull was late and providing its last known location. The alert message said, Ves as eels in vicinity are BQEST to keep the AS sheriff lookout, assessed FPOS as IBLE. Approximately 900 miles east of Cape Cod in the North Atlantic, in water approximately 13,000 feet in depth, roughly the same as the depth of the Titanic crash, the submarine went missing. Concern over the island's decreasing air supply led to a coordinated increase in search and rescue activities led by several different international organizations under a single command. There was an operator who turned out to be Ocean Gate Expedition CEO Stockton Rush. There were also four mission specialists, the phrase the firm uses for its guests, who paid as much as $250,000 each. There was speculation about the sub and its passengers for days. After the wreckage was located, however, a U.S. Navy officer told CBS News' David Martin that the Navy had detected an acoustic anomaly consistent with an implosion soon after the sub lost communication with the surface on Sunday. The Coast Guard received the information and was able to reduce their search area as a result, the officer said. According to the experts, the ship would have been destroyed practically instantaneously by such an implosion amid the high pressure of the ocean floor. Will Conan, chairman of the Marine Technology Society Submarine Committee, told Reuters, in a fraction of a second, it's gone. Within a fraction of a second, it implodes inwards, as Conan put it. And it's a mercy because that was probably a gentler finish than the unbelievably tough situation of being cooped up in the dark, cold, and restricted place for four days. Therefore, this would have occurred rapidly. No one could have possibly processed what had transpired in that instant. Who were the passengers aboard? According to CBS News reporting, the five people on board included Hamish Harding, a 59-year-old British billionaire, business owner, and explorer, British-Pakistani businessman Shahzada Dawood and his son Suleiman, French explorer Paul Henry Narjolet, who had previously dived to explore the Titanic on multiple occasions, and Ocean Gate Expedition CEO Stockton Rush, who was piloting the submersible. A statement released by Ocean Gate spokesperson Andrew Von Karens just before the Coast Guard conference on Thursday afternoon expressed sympathy to the families of the Titan crew and acknowledged that all five persons on board the submersible were presumed dead. According to the company's statement, these men were true explorers who shared a distinct spirit of adventure and a deep passion for exploring and protecting the world's oceans. Our deepest sympathies go out to the loved ones of these five lost souls. Everyone they knew will miss them and the light they brought into the world. 
On Thursday, when the Coast Guard reported that the submarine was likely to implode, Mauger revealed that they had been in touch with the British and French consulates. Members of the Dawood family, who run the massive Pakistani global business giant Dawood Group, confirmed their participation in the expedition in a statement released on Tuesday. The Dawood Foundation released a message on Thursday from the family of Hussein and Qasim Dawood, asking for prayers for the departed and the Dawoods. We appreciate everyone who helped with the rescue efforts so much. We continue to find strength in the overwhelming outpouring of love and support as we deal with this unfathomable loss. Search and Rescue Efforts On Thursday morning, authorities announced that a remotely operated underwater vehicle sent from the Canadian vessel Horizon Arctic had successfully reached the ocean surface. The ROV had found what the Coast Guard had initially described as a debris area on the seafloor, and by that afternoon, authorities confirmed that it comprised recognizable bits of the sub. Authorities are still working to develop the details for the timeline involved with this casualty and the response, as stated by Mauger, who also mentioned the incredibly complex operating environment along the seafloor, over two miles beneath the surface. U.S. Navy submarine expert Paul Hankins said at a press conference, five different major pieces of debris that told us that it was the remains of the Titan. To begin with, the external nose cone was one of these components. After that, we came upon a sizable debris field, Hankins explained. We were able to locate the bell of the pressure hull's front end among that massive debris field. There had been some sort of cataclysmic occurrence, and that was our first clue. The second debris field was smaller, but comprised the totality of that pressure vessel, as Hankins put it. When asked by a reporter how likely it was that the passengers would be recovered, Mauger stated, This is an incredibly unforgiving environment down there on the seafloor, and the debris is consistent with a catastrophic implosion of the vessel. For the time being, I can only say that we will keep working and searching the area down there. When the Titan wreckage was finally found, it had been days since numerous American and Canadian organizations had searched tens of thousands of square miles of open water. On Wednesday, the U.S. Coast Guard said that underwater noises had been heard in the search region, prompting the deployment of remotely operated vehicles, ROVs, to focus their efforts there. The Coast Guard announced through Twitter on Wednesday that three additional vessels had joined the search operation. Among them was a ship equipped with side-scan sonar, which can produce detailed maps of wide areas of the ocean floor, together with at least two other vessels, under unified command from different military and other organizations, this one started undertaking search patterns. The Coast Guard reported that C-130 planes were looking for the submarine and that a P-8 Poseidon aircraft equipped to detect submerged objects, was assisting from the Rescue Coordination Center in Halifax. Sonar buoys were launched from aircraft, including Canadian P-3S. After midnight on Wednesday, authorities announced that planes had detected underwater noises in the search region, prompting a shift in underwater search operations. The source of the noises was not immediately clear. The Coast Guard claims to have picked up the noises multiple times on Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. To be completely honest, we have no idea what the noises are, Frederick remarked. There are sonar buoys in the ocean because the P-3 aircraft heard noises, which explains why they are there. Based on a map of jurisdictions along the east coast of North America, the Boston Regional Coordination Center was in charge of the rescue operation, because the site of the Titanic shipwreck lies inside its domain. Frederick emphasized that the search and rescue teams were confronting an extremely complicated situation, noting that the combined search area swelled to roughly twice the size of the state of Connecticut, and the subterranean search extended down as far as two and a half miles deep. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.